Hi, I'm Zibby Owens, and you're listening to the award-winning podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Please sign up for my newsletter at zibbyowens.com for weekly updates about my podcasts, events, and more. Also, follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and also at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. And finally, join my virtual book club called Zibby's Virtual Book Club, which meets every other Tuesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Time until 3 p.m. and features half an hour of book club discussion followed by 30 minutes of Q&A with the author whose book we've just discussed. You can sign up on my website, zibbyowens.com, under the virtual book club section, or even on Instagram under the link in my bio. I hope you'll find me in all these different channels and enjoy this podcast. The sponsor for this whole Labor Day Book Blast week is firstbook.org. Obviously, the pandemic is crippling education for millions of students, especially those in low-income communities. The widening digital divide and extended quote-unquote summer slide due to COVID is devastating. Apparently, 40% lack access to reliable internet and functioning digital devices they can use for online learning, making the need for physical books and resources to prevent further educational backsliding absolutely critical. Firstbook breaks down the barriers to education for children living in low-income communities by providing its network of more than 475,000 educators serving children in need with free and affordable new high-quality books, educational resources, and basic needs items through the award-winning First Book Marketplace nonprofit e-commerce site. They need your support to ensure these children have what they need to learn during this critical time. Visit firstbook.org to help Amy Schmidt is the author of Cannonball, Fearlessly Facing Midlife and Beyond. She's the host of the podcast Fearlessly Facing 50, which I was on even though I'm only 44 right now, but that's okay. And she has a blog at fearlesslyfacing50.com. You should definitely check out all of her stuff and listen to our episode. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. I'm thrilled to be here. Thank you, Zibby. This is amazing. Awesome. Oh, and I had so much fun going on your podcast. So it's so great to now have you on my podcast. <laughs> fun. Hey, women in podcasting, it's a great thing, isn't it? It is. I love it. It's like the secret mm. ingredient in being able to like be at home and be with the kids and yet work and whatever. So And learn something every time I do it. You know, yeah. I sit back and I'm just like, wow, that's so cool. Like I learned something from everybody I talk to. And that just that just feeds me. I completely agree. I know my kids are like, why do you work? I'm like, it's not like work. It's like, <laughs> it's like, I get that too. I, it it yeah. really, yeah. So it's, anyway, it's a funny thing. It's a funny thing. And there's no button for a podcast. What do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean? I said that on my podcast. You were like, I remember asking you when you started your podcast and you were like, yeah, but there's no button to start a podcast. You know, gotta learn it. <laughs> I love that. I use that a lot, actually. Oh. I, I give you cred, but it's oh, like, thanks. <laughs> that. It's so true. It's, it's, it does take time to learn it, but then when you do it, it's amazing. Yeah. There you go. (laughs) And you are like the inspiration to a whole generation essentially with fearlessly facing 50 and now the book version, which you called cannonball fearlessly facing midlife and beyond, by the way, in terms of fearless, the fact that you put yourself in a bathing, that's not, is that, this is you, right? Oh yeah. That is me. That's the real deal. Yeah. I, I don't know if there's enough money in the world (laughs) that I would take to put myself from behind in a bathing suit on the cover of of a book. I don't think I would do it. It's crazy. And I never really, we had other, you know, covers that we were thinking about. So I happened to be on vacation for my 50th, right before the whole COVID thing. And I actually had my sunglasses on in that picture because just before that, my girlfriend was like, give me those because of course they're like bifocal sunglasses. They're expensive. Like I don't think you but what was going through my mind too at that point was like, how am I going to get out once I jump in? Like, it's not going to be pretty. And that's what we have to get over as women. You know what? You just put yourself out there. It's not going to be pretty. Do it. Make your splash. Why not? So how did you end up starting the podcast and writing this book at this stage of your life? Great question. You know, for me, it was just a time in my life where I knew there was more of me to give to do, to learn. Those were the three big things. I had taken on this role of what I call in the book, traveling spouse, which some people go, oh, I hate that. And and it's not my favorite term, but it is something I did and I embraced it and I have no regrets doing it. You know, at 22, I was ready to set the world on fire and broadcast journalism was my thing. And then ended up getting married and three kids later, things happen, life shifts. And you just kind of navigate the course as it goes and you learn so much. So I'm sitting there about, about six months before I turned 50. 
and my kids are grown. I've got one at home still, but you know, I have more time. I have more experience. And every conversation I was having with everybody was the same thing. Aging parents, body changing, you know, like relationships changing. Now I'm sitting across from my husband a lot more than I was before. Cause I was always going here with kids and there with kids and he was traveling. We're all talking about these same commonalities, but yet no one was really opening the dialogue and being vulnerable and putting themselves out there and saying, you know, we, we can deal with this and build a community around it. So I went forward and launched this podcast. And like you, I had no idea what I was doing. I knew the interview part of it and the research and the guesting would be something I can do. That's something I'm, I, I've done in my past. But actually learning the technology part of it was really challenging. So that's my first, anybody listening out there, challenge yourself around learning. Continue to do that. Embrace new challenges. Take those risks get uncomfortable, you know, it's okay. And so I wanted to share my story, but more importantly with the podcast, I wanted to open the dialogue for other women to share their stories, their journeys. And so people can sit back at the end of the podcast and say, wow, like she's inspired me to do something, to take action in some way. The story may resonate in a way personally for them, or the story may resonate with a neighbor neighbor of theirs or a sister or, so it's been awesome. And I have everybody from women that share incredible stories, journeys and challenges that they've taken on and how they've propelled forward to experts on top of mind topics. You know, we talk about health, we talk about relationships, we talk about gray and silver divorce. It's a big deal. We talk about empty nesting, all of those things, menopause, which is like a big taboo word, which my mom never spoke to me about. I didn't even know if she had a hot flash. So we talk about all that. And then I have celebrities on as well. So it's been amazing. And like I said at the beginning, after every time I just sit back and it's like, wow, I just learned something. So it's really been a cool journey, really has. And that's why I started it. I wanted just to change the narrative around midlife from crisis to opportunity, because it really is. It's a great opportunity. It's true. By the way, did you ever connect with my friend who started This Is Brightly? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I forgot to follow yeah, up. Probably should not have done this in the middle of a podcast, but <laughs> no, we were supposed to meet in New York city and then literally like March 15th. So we've been just chatting virtually and it's awesome. It's an awesome, it's just awesome nice. Place. It's nice to, to know that all these resources are being developed. Like I'm, I will be 50 and oh my gosh, in six years, almost six and a, yeah, and a little yeah. bit. And I'm like, I need to know that, you know, when I jump that there'll be like a soft, fluffy mattress down there to catch me. So I'm sort yeah. of like, you know, pulling these resources in close so that they're waiting for me. (laughs) Not that it should be such a jump, but you know. Yeah, no, totally. No. And that's a great platform. And it really is. It's about, you know, using your resources and asking for help and using your experiences that you have and just propelling forward. It's, it's, it's a great, I never thought at 50, I would be saying this because I can remember my mom turning 50 and standing with her, putting her, her pearl necklace on and thinking, I think I was 13 wow, that's old. And I was recently asked on an interview, you know, Amy, so what, what's the next 10 years look like for you? <laughs> and that was a really, wow, I'll be 60. I mean, if you would have asked me at 30, I would have said, ah, I'll be outdated. I'll be old. What am I going to be doing at 60? And now it's like, I'm living my best life. You know, it's really crazy, really crazy. It's great. It's like, why why stop? I, I I don't know. I feel like it's such a yeah. fertile time because women who have been like now that we're all living longer and are so well educated and trained, then yes. why not come back? It's like our brains don't go away. That's like part of why I like doing this podcast. It's like yes. just because we have kids and maybe we're at home making sandwiches every day or whatever, you know, doing the laundry yeah. and like whatever, it doesn't mean all those like interesting neurons and thoughts aren't firing all the time, right? And that we aren't still creative and wanting to contribute and helping others and all that other stuff. So it's like, as soon as our kids get older, I don't know, I think it's like so exciting to have this just wave of women flourish back on the scene. You know, it's like pulling back the curtain and everybody comes like rushing out. It is, it's amazing. It really is. And I've been able to surround myself with incredible women that just keep building you up. And it's a cool cool time. You'll enjoy it, you'll enjoy it. I bet, it keeps getting better, you know. (laughs) (laughs) So let's talk more about your book. When did you decide to make it into a, to make this a book at all? And then how long did it take to write? What did you do to write it? You had such a great mix. I was just telling you earlier of, personal stories and yet an advice with some bullet points and ways for us all to sort of conceptualize the 
ways to live more mindfully, essentially, and and then yeah. like how you did it. So just tell me a little of the backstory and, and yeah, all that. Great question. I've always been a writer. I mean, I always had, even in all of those years after I had my kids and during, you know, all of these things, I would sit on boards and immerse myself in the community and do all these things, but I was always writing. And one of the parts I write about in the book, one story I share is, you know, I've lost both my parents. And at the time I was living in Europe and my dad had Parkinson's a little bit more, I guess you can say expected. My mom was completely unexpected, but I had to travel back. And I remember Lufthansa Airlines flying from Frankfurt to Chicago and then trying to get to Milwaukee. And it was funny because I got there. And of course, if you travel internationally, these these flights are never delayed. And Lufthansa especially is never delayed. And on both occasions, when I'm trying to make it back from my parents, they're both delayed. And I didn't make it back in time for my mom, but for my dad, I just remember walking down the hallway and, you know, here in ICU and having, I have five, four other siblings, I'm one of five, and walking in the room and was overwhelmed and saw my dad. And hopefully, you know, I still to this day know that he knows I was there, but I had a panic attack, a full on panic attack, which I'd never experienced in my life. More and more women talk about this over 40. I think it was part of that whole changing of hormones and things as well, but it was just, I was there by myself. My husband was with my kids in Germany and I just felt the walls closing in and I went out into the hallway and just kind of collapsed. And my brother came around me, who I I have to say, the cover of the book, he said, are you really going to wear your swimsuit, Amy? So this is my brother that, you know, he just keeps me in check. He came and sat with me. I was sitting on the floor of the hospital and just couldn't get my breath. And he put his arm around me and he just said, Aim, he knows you're here. He's proud of you and write the damn book. Because I'd always said for all these years, I'm going to write a book. And I went for it. I finally allowed myself to let fear just go aside, not get stopped with it trying to be perfect. I wanted it in my own voice. I wanted to share my stories because I knew that, you know, I'm I'm Amy. I mean, it's me. I'm sharing it. I'm being vulnerable. But so many women will be able to resonate with what I'm writing. And that really gave me the power to share what I shared and then, you know, incorporate other women's stories that I've, encom- you know, encountered on my journey that have helped me. And then at the end, like you said, there's just strategies to apply to your life anytime, whatever your circumstance or story is and recalibrate. So for me, it took me a long time to write it in terms of it took me a long time to put pen to paper and get it done. It's been a journey, but there were six months. Uh, it took me more than six months, but six months before I turned 50, when I started the podcast, my brother's words resonated with me. I thought about my parents. I thought about the experiences I had. And I said, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to be brave. I'm going to stop being caught in fear and cannonball. Do it. Make my splash. And that's how I did it. Went through a lot of editing processes and all those things. As, as you know, with writing a book, it's a challenge. But And there were days I wrote three sentences. And there were other days I didn't get out of my pajamas from the time I put my kid on the bus until he came home. And he was like, mom, seriously, come on, like (laughs) shower. (laughs) I was like, well, no, but I'll get you dinner. It was process, but I'm so happy I did it. And I think too, at 50, I'm proud of it. Like I'm proud of it. And somebody said, it's really like, there's a lot of details in there, Amy. And I said, it's okay. You know, it's all right. That's what I wanted to do. You have to be vulnerable. You have to be brave. It's amazing. And tell me about your publishing journey once you wrote it. Well, I sent it off to, you know, a million, I'd never done it before. And honestly, the power of Google (laughs) and talking to other authors, it's like, okay, literary agents this way, this way. And I learned from, and I really did engage with a lot of other authors and talk to them who had self-published and who had not, and who had gone the traditional publishing route. I have one gentleman that I just really relied on. He he really is a mentor for me in the business world. And he's written several books and he's self-published. And he said, you know, the thing about traditional publishing is sometimes they take away your voice. And I think your book is so much to you. Like you're a writer that just sits on the couch next to somebody and that's how you feel. That's the kind of writing you have. I want it to be in your own voice. And so after many, many, many rejections from sending them out to, you know, publishers here and there, trying to find agents, midlife genre right now is huge. There's a lot of women writing about, you know, their journey. And I connected with Free Tomatoes Publishing out of New York City, who got back to me and said, listen, we only take so many projects a year. I love your story and I'll keep it in your own voice. And they only publish women's work over 40. And it was a perfect fit for me. She was a perfect mentor for me. It was just, it's, it was a really good learning process. And now I'm fueled with so many tools to go forward with my next book. 
Ooh, tell me about your next book. Mm, well, there's going to be a workbook. And then the next book is just going to be a continuation. And really how I use what I talked about in the book, all of these reflections and how I constantly go back and recalibrate and sit back and have to recreate my highlight reel and have to recreate my greatness statements and just continue, you know, just continue that journey. So yeah, it, it'll be similar, but different. Awesome. That's exciting. My gosh. Well, some of the strategies I thought were so great, like reflections on changing your to-do list to be your to-be list. Mm -hmm. I know that's so like minor, but so Mm -hmm. hugely impactful. For And you put an example to be my best, for example, to be my best, I will exercise today as opposed to I have to just get on the elliptical machine or something. Yes, exactly. It's just a mind shift. Yeah, it really is. But these mind shifts are like, you know, the biggest difference in having a good day and bad day. Honestly, I mean, that's all our minds control everything, your greatness statement. And I love some of the ones that you put in some of yours, for example, and you're challenging all of us to write our own greatness statements. And there aren't any rules and guidelines. You say, be certain your list will inspire you, make a copy of the list. And some of yours are love boldly, smile and laugh often, be loyal always, listen often, be a kind person, make time for your husband and partner, know you are needed in this world, trust your gut. I mean, this is good. It's great to just have it written down like your own yeah. mantra of sorts, right? Like who you are, what's important to you, because otherwise the days can just, you know, yeah. fly <laughs> without you what, being intentional. You laugh, yeah. When you laugh, you know, when I just go and and during this whole pandemic, you know, one of the best days in Connecticut was just having my husband come around me and like just put his arms around me. And it was like, wow, like I feel great. I feel safe. I feel all those little things you take for granted. And sitting and making your own greatness statements, and especially for women, because we just don't stop and savor those moments. We just go to the next thing and we don't realize all we've done. And we do amazing things. So true. I also love how you say we can't judge the people around us without knowing their stories and how sometimes you have to look up and you shared a story about Mm -hmm. running into a woman at the New York Public Library when you were trying to work. And at first, you know, she wanted to chit chat and you were trying so hard to focus. And then she talked about how she had actually lost her husband and you realized that there was such a story and you sort of like put your work aside. And now, of course, you include it in the book. So it's like it all came full circle. You're able to use it. But tell me more about that moment and and Uh, the importance of sort of looking up. And, you know, I, I have goosebumps because her name is Babs. I won't spoil the whole thing, but I will just say that I was caught up and I knew I was meeting my daughter. She works in Manhattan at a certain time. I was done with a couple of meetings and I had a window and it was like, okay, Aim, this is my window. I'm putting on my headphones. I'm going to the library because it's my favorite spot in the world. And I love to write there. And I sat down and I was just in the zone. You know how we get, it's like, turn my phone off. And I'm like, I have this time. I need to get through this chapter and just write it. And of course, you know, you drift off and you see a couple sitting over here and you look at all these people that are coming in and, and this overwhelming smell of garlic is next to me. And, and it ends up being the most amazing conversation. I sent her a book. It, it's for us to take time because we learn so much from other people and you never know until you embrace that moment. You know, I added value to her that day. She added so much value to me. And I could have so easily not looked up and just kept going and just saying, I got to finish chapter three. This is ridiculous. This lady's driving me crazy. I can't get past the garlic smell. Why is she moving her chair over toward me? You know, (laughs) seriously, like I'm listening to John Mayer. I am in my writing zone. And it's the it's one of the true gifts that I've experienced. So pretty cool stuff. That's amazing. And it takes a lot of discipline to shift out of those times. Like, I feel like, yes, like what you were saying with, I have a window, like that resonates so much. Cause I'm like, this is when I've allocated time to do this. And if I don't do it, then I won't be able to do the other six things that I was going to do later. And then the whole thing, and it's like a whole snowball. And when am I ever getting anything done? And never, nothing's going to finish. <laughs> and it all like weighs on you so much. And uh, 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 anyway, so I love this. I feel like I needed the story personally. So yeah, thank you. You give yourself permission to take those moments because you never know what's going to come out of them. And I hope through writing this book too, my kids see that a little bit more because, you know, I've, I've got older kids and they're, 
they're navigating this uncertainty right now and they're thinking about their futures and what's September going to bring? What's October? I don't think I can move back into the city until January, you know, all of these things. And it's like, just embrace the moment that you're in. And that's easy for a 50 year old to say, it's not easy for, you know, to translate to a 23 year old, but it is so important to take those moments just to look up and you never know what you're going to learn. I made an incredible new friend and that's not easy to do with midlife. I talk about it in the book, friendships. It's like, you know, some evolve, some evaporate, some, you know, new ones bloom. You just never know. You never know. And you don't know what people are, what just happened to somebody who crosses your path, right? You don't know what tragedy or what anything, and you can't make assumptions. I mean, of course, now I cross paths with basically nobody. It's like my husband and I and my kids just like crossing the same, like etched into the kitchen floor. Like, you know, they're like grooves at this point between the table and the kitchen after like being here for so long. But totally um, choreographed. I know. Exactly. One's getting a bagel, one's getting coffee. (laughs) But a girlfriend of mine just finished reading Lacey Crawford's new book, a memoir about her time at St. Paul's where she underwent sexual assaults and all this. And my friend actually knew her at school at a later stage of her life and felt like she had made some assumptions about her right. without knowing her story. And she said, now reading her book, she's like, wow, I'm not going to make assumptions about anyone ever again, because you don't know. So for her, that's what it took. You know, for you, it might have been, you know, a, a, an afternoon at the library. But just right. yeah. at some point, we all just have to, you know, you just don't know. I mean, it sounds easy yeah. to say, but you have to like learn it somehow yourself. So yep, yep, exactly. Spot on. Anyway, so do you have advice to aspiring authors now that you've Oh gosh. Got yes. Cannonball out into the world. And PS, I love I, I love my little blurb here. I was so excited when it came and you included me. So thank you. That was awesome. Oh, <laughs> I was I was honored. Yeah, for anybody, anybody listening, just do it. You know, just do it. And and don't let that fear set in. When I talk about cannonball, I always, you know, talk about visualizing myself going to the pool when you're a young kid and you're running to get to the pool at the club or at the public pool and your mom's trying to lather on, you know, sunscreen is quick, but you're just jumping in and you're making this splash and you're saying, mom, watch me, you know, watch me again and you do it again and you do it again. And then we hit this age where we so want to jump in fearless like we used to. And we want to go to the top of that high dive and we get to about the third tier, the third rung, and we look up and something stops us. And it's fear of perfectionism for women a lot of times. It's fear of just that power of procrastinating, of putting it off. I'll do it when I have more time tomorrow, or I'll do it when the kids get bigger. So for anybody that's thinking about writing a book, it's your cannonball moment. That's what I call it. Cannonball with confidence. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to adhere to a certain timeline. Maybe you'll never finish it, but at least you started. And I think there's so much power in that. You know, get up, get dressed, get going is what I always say. And those days when you just want to pull the covers over and you want to say, oh, just make this go away. The uncertainty that's coming for all of us in the fall, navigating kids and routines and work schedules. We don't know what's coming. Get up, get dressed, get going and just start. And maybe it's a sentence. Maybe it's three. Maybe you can write three chapters. Doesn't matter. But just get over judging it and just do it. I think that's my best advice. That's great advice. And also, I love the analogy of the cannonball because there is no such thing as a perfect cannonball. I mean, the whole point of a cannonball is to be sloppy and messy and and splashy and just like all over the place. So it's just the perfect analogy. Yeah. Anyway. And you want to be able to do it with confidence so that anybody watching that the, the waves are spilling over the side of the pool and you're in your tankini and you probably are worrying about getting up the ladder or trying to pull yourself out of the pool because that's what we do now. You know, it's like, oh, I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it. But how am I going to get myself out of the pool? You'll get yourself out of the pool. You'll get yourself up the ladder. You just got to do it and make your splash. And that's what it's all about. Love it. Well, Amy, thank you so much. I love this chat. I knew I would, and I did. And <laughs> thank you for this oh, great, absolutely. I feel like just went and had coffee with a friend or something. So thank you. I know. Me too. Me too. It was fantastic. Thank you for having me. I so appreciate it. I'm so proud of you, of what you do. Oh, and I watch your journey and it inspires me. And I, I've told Zibby this before. You're a mentor. You really are for me in many, many ways. And I encourage women to have mentors. 
you know, they don't even need to know you sometimes. I mean, I have mentors that don't even know who I am, but it's, you need those people in your life to continue to inspire you. And you do that for me. So I applaud you with what you're doing. Thank you. Well, you're inspiring Um, me with your book. So there we go. (laughs) Maybe you'll be on the cover with your swimsuit. Somebody asked me, what swimsuit is that? It's kind of cute. I'm like, oh my gosh, don't even know. (laughs) It's true. I mean, it's very flattering. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having (laughs) Thanks for coming. All right. Have a great day, Amy. All right. Okay. Bye. Thanks so much to firstbook.org for sponsoring this Labor Day book blast. Please consider giving to firstbook.org to help their network of 475,000 educators serving children in need. Thanks for listening to this episode of Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Zibby Owens and at Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. Also sign up for my newsletter at ZibbyOwens.com and sign up for my virtual book club and meet lots of authors on Zoom every other week. Thanks so much to Steve and Ryan at Texture Sound for the sound editing. And thank you to Morning Moon Productions for providing this fantastic intro and outro music. Thank you.